Welcome back to the channel. So texturing in uh, a modern day pipeline needs procedural passes. So that will be like occlusion and those type of effects. And today I'm gonna take a look at the workflow I use to bake these textures using Renaman. So let's jump into it now. Okay, so here's a baked texture and in texturing we use these procedural texture passes a lot and uh, so this one is a combination I call it some kind of rainbow occlusion so I baked this using render man and um, in uh, Mari we have the model tab here so we can bake there but um, I find uh, the render man bake a little more uh, user friendly to me at least because I have more options and um, so let's see here. So in the red channel, I have a regular occlusion. In the green channel, I have something called, I call it like thickness. So it's essentially occlusion, but with inverted normals. And uh, the blue channel, that's another type of occlusion. And this one has, if we look at the normal direction, it has more emphasis on down facing areas. So I can use this for generating a a dirt mask. So let's jump into Maya and Renderman and see what we can do with all different big tools. So here in Maya 2018, let's hit the IPR button. And this is the Renderman tab where we have the Renderman tools. So I'm gonna cover Renderman in future tutorials, but this time I wanna take a look at the baking because that's something I use for my texturing workflow. And here we have the, um, the assets here with my with my passes already set up so let's dissect so if I hit the S this is the same S, D and F uh, in the render view we can get the RGB channel so I've hooked this up uh, to my bake shader and let's take a look what we can do with, with this and uh, the dirt map and uh, other type of effects so yeah um, let's pause this let's minimize it or let's actually discard it for the moment and hit hypershade so my workflow is quite simple it's a, uh, a constant shader uh, just for visualizing my bake texture uh, node this is where we hook up anything that comes in here as an rgb so if i uh, hit my for her so I have my RGB going into the input RGB. So anything that now comes into this node is gonna be baked. I'm gonna go through this. So the bake node here, for example, um, when I wanna bake something, I have to browse to a directory where I wanna save it. So this is on my NAS drive. The, the name of, of the file I wanna bake to. So this is bake D dot underscore map id underscore dot tax and my atlas style is mari because that's what i want to render it to so it's the udim of course it's going to be easier for me to open this in mari but you can render it to mudbox or zbrush um, numbering as well and this map id this is where it's gonna so like replace it with whatever atlas style you choose here so that's just a way to say okay either mori mudbox or zbrush then we have here the the bake enabled so if you have baked something so i guess the actual bake texture node was a way to simplify uh, a very complex shading or texturing calculations in your uh, node graph in Maya to be able to take away some of uh, the strains of reading massive amount of textures. I mainly use it for baking textures, but if you have a complex shading network, you can reuse. So you first bake whatever textures, then you say uh, um, reuse. So this is input, then it's gonna bake here, but if you have baked and you want to actually reuse or use that texture, you can set it to texture. Then it's going to read the texture, it's not going to bake anymore. 
automatic is uh, I think it's in hybrid way so if it's not baked it's gonna bake and if it has something baked it's switch over to texture if I'm not wrong I don't use it for this purpose I use it for actually just baking textures at the moment so and um, here we have the EXR and TIFF and that's if I believe yeah it's the actual um, compatibility of the file format so there's uh, some quirks here when it comes to um, bleeding texture so if you set this to EXR for example you can make to EXR ex uh, as well but uh, what I understand the TEX is the only format that will perform bleeding at the moment and that that is something I have asked Pixar to uh, fix. I want to be able to you render straight to EXR and have bled textures. So here we have the file format that's the file format compatibility. So I set it to open EXR and then I rename my uh, baked textures to EXR to read them in Mari later on. Here we have uh, if you have float da data in my case I don't need that so I set it to half compression to, to none here. This is the resolution of the map that you're gonna bake to. I baked to 2k here just for a speed purpose and um, here is my uh, this is the mixer it's just a layer blend where I bl blend three different dirt so this is a different type of uh, occlusion uh, patterns so I have uh, one regular occlusion one uh, ah, it was as thickness and the the like direction occlusion that I showed earlier and it's I put it together here in a blend node. So let's make a new constant and apply this and build it from scratch. So if I say pixar constant and make a new one and apply it onto this one, assign material, yeah, and hit, hit the IPR and see what happens. It's gonna be white, kind of obvious. Let's go this over. Let's gonna do some real estate here. And let's take in now a new Pixar dirt node and hook it up. So Pixar dirt. This is the occlusion node. So this is what I use to uh, calculate my different effects. So first off, just take this, the RGB to emit color and see what happens. So here's default. This is the, the occlusion that I hooked up to one of the channels in my mixer here. And let's start to like to spread for example, see what happens. See here, we can take distance. This is where you set your uh, kind of what, what kind of uh, look you want on your uh, effect. Um, we also have here outside, inside, and both. So this is what I use to set my, for example, the simulate thickness. You, if you set it to inside, it's gonna calculate, gonna reverse the normals, I guess, on the object. So this is where you can get. Let's zoom in here a kind of a like uh, almost like a curvature map if you set very tight max distance and mess with a fall off as well can actually get something that's almost a curvature or as like a corner mask if you want to use it like that so that's just turn around here almost like a uh, tune shading. So that's an option. Uh, let's take a look here. So another thing I did was to uh, make this kind of, um, let's set it to, uh, let's see what it, how it looks on both. So this is a hybrid of inside and outside. So that's another way we can. So yeah, you can see, you can definitely uh, use this for 
type of effects when it comes to texturing. So yeah, it's, it's nice to be able to set this. And uh, outside is the regular occlusion type of effect. So I guess when you want to do a, a dirt map, so we have the bias normal. So this is something if I set this to, so I think it's X, Y and Z. If I set it to one here, for example, it's gonna, let's set it to minus one. See what happens. You see the shifts, the normal there. So playing around with this. So if I set it to one, we can see here, you start to see it has more effect on uh, on things going down. So this is what I did to, to uh, get that kind of dirt path. So now it's uh, a matter of setting the distance and um, fall off and play with this. And the cosine, for example, cosine spread to crank this to something that you like. Let's see, can I set it to, yeah, do something like that maybe. So it's more like dirt has been collecting on uh, sloping down like this. So this is a more emphasis about one direction. So what I did, I just took th uh, three different dirt, dirt nodes and mixed them together to bake it out. So. If I make a Pixar layer, what's it called? Layer blend. That was the one I used. So um, looking at this, this is uh, you can layer textures here. So it goes from layer seven here is uh, and the background. So I, I used it from the bottom and up. So the background color is uh, in my case set to black here, and then I set um, the, the color 7 here, this is what I piped one of my, let's set red for example, pure red and set it to uh, add, let's see, I guess we can set it to screen, okay, so I want to have, uh, so I hooked something strange there, it should be this one, okay, and let's take IPR again, yeah, so now that's working, Alpha. So now I just need to hook my uh, one of these into uh, the Alpha 7 there. So I can take the red, for example, and go to Alpha 7. So this is going to give me the result of this dirt node here. And let's scoot this over. So now we can do it here with another one, Pixar Dirt. And this one we can say at the, the standard uh, kind of um, occlusion default one. So I just need to take the, another color here. So on layer six, that's one above. I set this to uh, blue, for example. So can just take pure blue there and enable it. Set it to uh, screen, take the red to alpha 6. So there we have another one. So if I now take red, blue, so now we have the green one. So let's hook up a green into the blend 5. Let's take pure green there. Oops. Okay, so uh, let's make another dirt. We are, I mean, you can p pipe anything in there if you want, but Pixar PXR dirt. And uh, let's see. So essentially, I just want to tweak this to something first. So let's make the thickness one. Just gonna scoot this over, take my result RGB here to see what I'm doing and let's make this a uh, some kind of uh, inside and uh, 
let's take a short distance. Almost can make uh, actually much like a this type of uh, can I use it as a uh, like a edge wear wear and tear thing. So yeah, so now hook this back there and take this red into alpha five. Yeah, so there we have this S D F. Oops. So we have a. Uh, I accidentally made this S D F. So that's R G B in the viewer. So here we have a now a uh, setup with this kind of a. Uh, combined uh, texture. So if I bake this out now, I can use it in Mori and just take a, like a, a shuffle node and take whatever pass I want to use for texturing purpose. So the, the final here is to actually bake this and then we need the Pixar uh, bake texture pattern. So let me just cancel the IPR here and hook up a uh, Pixar bake texture so what we do we just take the result RGB to the input RGB so this is our pass-through node result RGB to uh, this let's see emit color and here we we have to have a the file name is gonna be so here in my Maya directory just go to a place Let's take um, images and make a new folder called uh, baked. Copy the address, paste it into here. Rainbow occlusion dot underscore map ID dot tex. So this is gonna be the location where we bake it out. I set it to Mari. Let's set this to 2K by 2K. Okay, TX, OpenXR, that's fine. And yeah, so I think I can now just select the, the object and go to bake render so this is gonna start a, uh, a a bake process for this asset it's gonna be on the local queue and so yeah now it's gonna bake the disk and um, yeah then we are just read it into mori as usual when importing a, a texture Thanks for hanging out with me here today and if you want to support my channel consider subscribing and also hit the bell notification so you don't miss anything when I go live or do one of these tutorials. So yeah, check some of the videos here that's highlighted and uh, see you next time.